something that somebody I would love for somebody to know me is when you find out I'm bisexual, can you stop asking who takes out the trash? Gosh, like who says that? <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Sequoia. I am your one and only research analyst here at Tenuity in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Aaron Gooden. Uh, I am the Associate Director of Amazon and Marketplace Channels. My name is Natalie Peters. I'm the Operations Program Manager here at Tenuity. I'm based remotely out of Oakland, California, and I identify as a queer woman of color. My name is Caitlin Stokes. I am an IMS manager and I'm located in Philadelphia. My name is Scott Foreman and I am a creative specialist on the creative services team at Tenuity. I've been at Tenuity for about seven months now and I'm based in Portland, Oregon. Something that I wish people knew about the LGBTQ plus community is that within that community, there's so much diversity. We are not a bunch of stereotypes. We are not all the same. Not every lesbian is gonna act a certain way, not every bi is gonna act a certain way, not every gay person is gonna act a certain way. Um, bisexuality is not like a rank, like, oh my God, I'm like 70, 30. It's not like a, oh my God, one day I like 70% of me likes men and 30% of me likes women. Get out of that. You know, I always joke that that dating in our community is, is slightly different, but it's the same. You, you still get the butterflies when you meet someone. I think that that is probably one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say, oh, you're straight acting or something of that sort. Like, there's no such thing. We see shows like Sex in the City or we watch RuPaul's Drag Race, which I absolutely love, but that doesn't represent necessarily who I am. Oftentimes, you know, when we are lumped under this umbrella of LGBTQ plus community, it's very easy to uh, generalize. We come in literally pen intended, all shades of the rainbow. We are not all cookie cutter. We're not all one size fits all. Just understanding that gay or queer doesn't look one way or the other. There's a whole rainbow within the rainbow and it's okay. We have to accept each other treat us the way that you would want to be treated, but then also know that there is always struggle behind um, our journey. My experience as a queer woman of color is going to be different than somebody that identifies as bisexual or a trans person of color. Being a person of color and in the um, LGBT community, my God, how many minorities can one be, right? It's really a minority within a minority. Um, I'm gay, but I'm also black on top of that. For me, I'm a woman, I'm, I'm black, and then I'm bisexual. So I have all these different minority groups that make up me. We're all in the same fight. So why do, you know, the black gays have their thing, the white gays have their thing, the transgender have their thing, bisexual have their thing, which is all good because they're, they're different. But when we come together, for whatever reason, it's almost like we're back into the external world and nitpicking at each other. A huge issue that the queer community still faces is discrimination from within the queer community. So many of us experience that, but what ends up happening is that a lot of the other forms of discrimination get completely overlooked, such as racism and sexism. I think the goal of the LGBTQ plus identity is to create acceptance from within, but in reality, there's still a lot of internalized homophobia. There's still a lot of racism from within the queer community. It's a lack of understanding. It's a lack of, of seeing anything outside of someone else's realm that could be different. We have a long way to go. I think we've come a long way, um, but I think there's subcultures within the community that are more accepted than others. For heterosexual orientation, usually the black male is kind of the taboo, the exotic, um, the desirable or, or something of that sort. Whereas in the homosexual community, the desirable is still the white male, usually very muscular, but the black male is usually very hyper feminine, um, not super masculine. Um, that's kind of the, the caricature that is drawn of us in the gay community. We, we accept the L's, we accept the G's, but sometimes even me as B, in our alphabet, as he call it, alphabet people, 
it's like there's people that discriminate even just by oh well I don't identify with that piece of the of the queer spectrum or you don't look this type of way um, especially with people of color on top of all the police brutality and racism and and hate crimes committed in general especially on black people there's another layer um, that is not being covered the the disproportionate murder of black transgendered women is quite disturbing. There are women um, as of late in Tallahassee that they're being misgendered and there's a whole argument about their gender and then they're not being reported. The coverage isn't the same, the outrage isn't the same. So there is that dirty little secret within, within my plight as a black woman, but don't forget my plight in the um, community as well with LGBTQ rights. And that's something that is very important. You can educate yourself on it, but there are dozens and dozens and dozens of murder of transgender people, um, especially transgender people of color that is not being discussed. Again, like I mentioned, a lot of awareness is out there about what it means to be a part of our community or where our community actually is. But um, as far as really deeply understanding, what does it mean to be gay? What does it mean to be bi? What are those experiences like? Um, I think that that's the part that we still face as a challenge uh, for our community. I think representation has gotten so much better, even in just the last couple years. I think I see myself a lot more in movies and television where I see gay couples together or gay characters who don't fit this kind of classic stereotype that a lot of gay characters fall into. It's way different from when Ellen, when she first came out, however many years ago, to where we have news anchors on worldwide news saying, hey, I'm gay and hey, I'm, I'm having a baby. We are in media, we're in music. Um, you know, there are gay basketball players, there are gay football players, there are gay actors. So now you do have shows like Pose, you do have, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, you do see Shonda Rhimes, she always writes about interracial, um, interracial love, but especially within the LGBT community and in different age range. She does a great job. I do think we're heading in an amazing direction. I think there is so much um, to be thankful for as far as actors, um, as far as directors and everyone who has helped leading this charge. I think it's great to see so many entertainers, to see so many government, I mean, even though it's not a lot of government officials, you do have, you know, open, openly gay mayors and judges that are now saying, hey, I am this, but I'm also doing my job as a productive citizen. We definitely have some room to grow with representation though. I think oftentimes we see gay characters represented as gay white men. And really that's just the tiniest piece of the puzzle here. We're not seeing queer people of color. We're not seeing trans people. We're not seeing a lot of bisexual characters. And so I'd like to be able to see all of these identities explored in mainstream media because in reality, we're everywhere. I do still think that the trans community and the lesbian community and even to a certain degree the bi community specifically from the male perspective is still quite underrepresented. Um, I think that it's very hyper focused on the gay man when you are talking about primetime television, Netflix originals, movies, things like that. It's still very centered around the gay male. We are being represented I think through employment efforts all the way through the actual entertainment and the things you see but we need to do that more consistently, more genuinely, and on months outside of June. And being able to have joy uh, associated with it, not just always the struggle, um, I think is huge because it normalizes it. It shows the family next door where there's two moms or two dads um, is no different. Educate yourself on if you have a bias. Um, it's okay if you do. Self-awareness is key. Once you find out you have that bias against this group of people or group of people within the LGBT community, address it. We Google everything else. We Google sports rosters. We Google schedules. We Google news programming. We Google everything else. We Google the menu down the street from the restaurant we go to every week, but we still want to see the menu. So Google how you can be an ally. I think that being a good ally means that you listen to your LGBTQ plus friends when they ask for your help. You listen to them when they try to explain how they feel about words that were said or actions that were taken against them and you stand up for them. I think that it's awesome in our country that 
gays, lesbians, bi's, if there's an injustice, a hate crime, something like that, that we have the platform and the ability to say that and the freedom of speech to say that without being um, you know, censored. But I think that where we could probably use more help is if our allies could use that same platform to bring awareness to our community and to bring awareness to the injustices in our community. Just be there however you can. Support your friends, support your family, support your coworkers. Use your platform. You're just as strong as we are as far as your social media following or maybe your public speaker or whatever it is. Really tap that network to bring awareness if you're truly considering yourself an ally. The same way you support any other cause, Find out how you can care about that and make sure that people in the LGBT community are counted within that. Be about something bigger. Be about standing for a greater community and use your voice, use your privilege uh, for good.